Hey, hey babe. babe. Hey, babe. Hey, hey babe. babe. Welcome to another episode of Hey, hey babe. babe. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. You look good. You got a nice sweater on. Yeah. Yeah. I got this 70% off. Okay, let me tell you this story. This is from this company called G-Star Raw. I know G-Star I, Raw. I, I'm not trying to do any plugs here, okay? Right. No more with the goddamn plugs. But right. But my point is is that uh, I don't particularly shop there. I think they make some things I really like. They have some good right. coats, good quality, right. but it's not necessarily my style. Inadvertently, someone I work with, a colleague of mine, that we exchange gifts. Okay. They they have given me a G Star Raw gift certificate for Christmas of, of five uh, the amount of five hundred dollars. Uh, look at me. Recently, for the last five Christmases. <laughs> okay. Now you have twenty five hundred dollars worth of G Star Raw credit. No, not credit. I used it. It's, yeah. I, I own twenty five hundred dollars worth of G Star materials in this home. Right. Okay. Now, outside of those gift certificates. I spent zero dollars at G Star Raw. Right, right, right. Every year I go. All right, I don't know who got in their ear and told them that I was the guy <laughs> with G Star Raw. But the second year I was like peculiar. The third year I was like, is this a joke? The fourth year I was like, interesting. Yeah, because it's really not displaying effort unless this person thinks this is really what I want. Yeah. Then it's hats off. Yeah, thank you for. Being solid, knowing what yeah. I want. Fifth year in a row. Now, here's another thing G-Star Raw does that I don't really like. On the gift certificate, it says, in one year, this has no value. And they say, you can only use it at this G-Star Raw location. That's ridiculous. That was year one. I went into the G-Star Raw location. I said, what is this? And the guy goes, yeah, that's how we do it here. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like the customer From the customer point of view, I got this as a gift. You're telling me I got to use it in 365 days. Then it goes from 500 American yeah. dollars to right. zero. Right. And I can only use it in this store, not online, and not in the other nine locations in right. the tri-state right. area. They go, yeah. I go, okay. Yeah, that doesn't make any I sense. I to the store. It's like he had given it to me December before that. So I was in there December of the next year. So I was days away from in the year one from the first $500 expiring. Right. So I walked in and I... Couldn't find five hundred dollars worth of stuff that I wanted, so I said to the guy, "Well, I don't understand. So, if I don't just buy something right now just to buy it, then you're gonna take this all away from me." And he goes, "Yeah." And I go, "Okay." So then I have to buy stuff I don't want right now and just return it, and then you give me store credit, which is good for how long? And he says to me, "We don't take returns." And I said, well, what do you mean? What? I'm not kidding. He goes, we do exchanges, not returns. So if you buy something now for the sake of it, I can give you a different size. I can't give you the product back. And I said, that can't be right. It even sounds illegal. And I swear to you, this is what this kid said to me. He goes, I go, how do you get away with something like that? I really was, but I, was, I wasn't being mean. He goes, uh, where'd you start raw? And... Our theory is you won't return it. You don't need to. We're that good. <laughs> That's a horrible theory. It was a piece of shit answer. So <laughs> I bought stuff that I didn't really necessarily want. Um, and then FYI, it was December of the following year. So that week, he, I got a card after I just exhausted the 500. Oh, that week... The next 500. And this pattern, because I always wait a full year because I, I don't go in there. Yeah. Nothing ends up. The stuff that I have gotten has been good and stuff. Like, I get it. Like, every once in a while, I'll find something. It's a great sweater. That doesn't look insane on me. But, like, every year it happens where I go in December and I spend the 500. And then the week, that week, he gives me the new 500. And he has no idea that you have no affiliation or even care about G Star Raw in the slightest. No, and I love the guy, and he gives—he's a great gift giver. He gives me other gifts. Five hundred dollars is—it is—and he gives me personal gifts. He gives me like things, and he like he gives me a book, and he'll write in the book like why he got it. Like I love the man, and 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 he's a great man. But it is funny that two thousand five hundred dollars of G Star Raw, I have gone in there with a gift certificates over the last five years. I'm not gonna say his name, but I think I know who the man is. Really? I, I if I had to guess, I just can think, you hey babe it so, uh, though. <laughs> Yeah. So so but so my my point was this is a G Star. So get this. Here we are in December. I was just gonna ask. I got last year's five hundred. So I go in and I go into the city, a trip just for this. I got anxiety hanging over my head. You gotta understand, when I get hit with the five hundred a week after I spent the five hundred, which has been the pattern for five years in a row, I then get a a burden is lifted when I walk out of there and I'm like, Oh, I got myself a parka. Right. I got myself a hoodie. Right. And you know, whatever. And then it's like, all right, now you're on the clock again. 
You got to spend this 500 At that location. At that location. And so then I go in and I go to location this, like, no joke, like, not even a month ago. And I and it shuttered. And I go, oh, my God, it's closed. And so I walk across the street into a scotch and soda. Right. Not a nice line. Yeah, great know? line. And uh, they were closed. And I saw a guy and I knock and I go, you're supposed to be open. And he goes, the machines are down. And I said, well, all right, but. So now what? And he goes, well, will you pay with a credit card? I go, sure. So he let me in. And I said, hey, fella, do you know what's going on across the street? Because I told him the whole thing I told you. He really yeah. was, he was a nice guy. He listened. And he goes, uh, oh, they're, they're closed permanently. And I go, oh, I must, I'll have to go to the other location. He goes, no, no, they're closed permanently too. And I go, why? He goes, yeah, they closed all their locations. G-Star Raw has folded. This is what he told me. The, the G-Star Raw. Yeah. He <laughs> says, at least in the New York area, every location in New York City is closed. He goes, you may be able to go online. Came home. I drafted a, a firm letter, an email, an, an electronic communication, yeah. and I wrote to G-Star, and I was like, I told them everything. And they gave me a code to use $500. They're still doing online. So I took the $500 code. I went online. This was 70% off. 7 zero. It was listed at $140, and, and I bought it for $42. And wow. I took, I, it's a good second time I wore it. It's a, and I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a fit. Thanks. And it's indigo dyed, so they do say be careful because the garment, if you go right. on a light fabric, so I'm, I'm also, it, they're giving me anxiety in different ways now. And G-Star Raw is one of those things where it just fits, it's good. I had an aunt who, very similar to your friend, didn't know, didn't understand, whatever. You know, when I was, you know, maybe 15 years old, for about three Christmases in, in a row, no gift cards or nothing, bought me, opened up gift on Christmas, a FUBU sweatshirt. <laughs> My Aunt Janet did that three years in a row. I was bought a FUBU sweatshirt. A little white kid with blonde hair got his hair cut at Supercuts. For us, by us. For us, by us. FUBU sweatshirt that she picked out. Does FUBU have retail themselves brick and mortar? Because I always see FUBU in like Marshalls. Yeah, I don't know. Fubu. And the guy, Damon... John. John. Shout who, out Damon John. Shout out Damon John. One who's, of my favorite trucks. Who's, yeah, who's one of the favorite trucks. God bless he, FUBU too. I he, just, I'm just saying, when I see it, it's usually in the Marshalls, but I think that's where you get like the next season, like the, the maybe right. the uh, Irregulars. Right. You ever buy something irregular? Uh, there's steep discounts on a regular and you'll find them uh, they used to be in the outlet stores but now you go to like a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx and right. you find these things. I'll tell you a real nice treat something is, has a steep discount okay. and because it's marked on the tag a regular they're transparent about that you say it says a compare at I love to go into Marshalls and TJ Maxx and I love to compare at right. on the receipt it says like you like this uh, candle votive it's uh, it's, uh, it's eight dollars compare at twenty nine ninety nine, and then they let you know right there the savings you're getting Right there, right there, the right there, in there. So what I do is I will go into um, to like a Marshalls, and you find something irregular, but you search the garment up and down, and you can't even spot the irregular. Right, and then you buy it in a regular an irregular price. Right, uh, that's a, that's a fun little victory. See, I'm one of those guys where I, if I could, if I could. Every single outfit of mine, I'd wear a, a batting practice baseball jersey because it hides my because I, I have an irregular body. But you do have a good jersey body. Good jersey body. Yeah. When I take off my shirt, it's a it's just a letdown. Multiple women in my life have either I've taken off my shirt, you know, right before I have sex, and they've turned the lights off as soon as I took off my shirt, or if they've asked me to put my shirt back on. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, my God, yeah. no. I, I, How I, do you deal with there that? There was a girl on top of me just, once. For me, I just wear a snowsuit. Yeah. And I just, I don't even. No, there was a girl on top of me once, and I was go like, she was on top. We were having, in the midst of it, and I was going to take my shirt off, and she put her hand on my chest and said, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I swear. Oh, my God, I can't deal with that. She goes, don't. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! What a terrible person. Yeah. Or honest. Honest. I, I don't know. Did she it. give you a dose? Of, like, what? How do you feel about her? I mean, well, she stopped. I, I'm literally lightheaded right now. I'm spinning around. My head I is swear spinning. To God. We we Ooh. had sex that one and only time, as you would imagine. Don't. She goes don't. <laughs> as I was going to take my shirt off in the heat of passion. Or, or, okay, let's 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 talk about this. And I forgot what we got. But do you think that maybe she was just like, I can't even wait. Like, don't even bother. No, no, no. We were actively having sex, and I went to take it off because it was sweltering in my room. And she, she whispered, "Don't," and put her hands on my chest. A, uh, just a, you have a wonderful build. No, but I don't. That's when crazy I take, talk. When I take my shirt off, I just I have flabby tit. It's just weird. But I, you don't. And you, at the time, I you're have in a good gym clothes boxing. Body. You know how to box. I know how to box. Come on. Remember when we went to that boxing ring in in Kentucky? Dude, that was it was war. in somebody's house. 
Yeah, well, you looked up the guy who was like the Gus Amato or Damato, whatever the hell. Yeah, he, yeah. You looked up the guy who was like he was like, I, I don't even I don't know his name, and I, I forgot but he his was name. an older man who ran a boxing a full boxing gym out of his residential home. Yeah, that was also like a two hundred year old house. Two hundred. He yeah. was. Amazing! It was Amazing. something Mike out of a Tyson movie. Tyson train there. It was something out of a movie. I have, I have video. We have video on photos. I have video of you shout like doing. Remember he he got you on the bench. Yeah. And here's what I did. I stayed because uh, I, I was like, all right, let's drive there together, and maybe you go in. I'll go because I'm not gonna box, you know. Like, and yeah. then we got up there, and it was like the most unique. Unbelievable. He, he he has adopted adopted children. He takes care of them. Where were we? Cincinnati, this, but this was in Kentucky. I think it was in Kentucky. We went into Kentucky, an old school Kentucky a full boxing, boxing gym. gym in a house, uh, a ring in the house that was there for thirty plus. And years. I stayed there for like like eighty minutes, just videoing you boxing. It was yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then Sal walks no in, and then Sal walks in, and then I heard one of the guys on the pads. He go one guy who says to the other guy goes he goes yo I seen that motherfucker before. And the guy on the pad goes yeah he was on best. Week ever. <laughs> yeah. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you boxer. She said, don't. She said, don't. Yeah. She said, don't. So, but you know, listen, it's, it's, you know, I've, and I've said this on many podcasts. I also had a casting director, uh, you know, nice guy who was actually casting my CBS pilot. He said to me, he said, do you know what your problem is? <laughs> oh, and I said, no, not that I asked for it, but I guess what is it? He goes, you have leading man face, best friend body. Whoa. So you're not castable. Either be one or the other. Either be the leading man and get ripped, or get fat and be the best friend. Why? And you're hovering in no man's land. I'm hovering in no man's land. He said, but your only that's, out that's is to create. old thinking. You create. Why can't you be the I, guy that you are? I know. That's what I'd be. I don't agree with that. Uh, well, you know, Who I don't agree with Who is this man? Him. Say his name. Mark Hirschfeld. Wow, you son. Mark, zoom, <laughs> pu push in here. Mark, if you're listening, and we know you are. You, Nick Lachey, and a few hundred priests are listening all the time. Yeah. Lulu's listening, Saratoga. We know. We know who our listeners yeah. are. No, actually, Mark Hirschfeld's a great guy. It's not Mark Hirschfeld. It's another guy. I just <laughs> blanked on who it was, so I said, actually, one of the nicest men in casting. It was not Mark Hirschfeld. I forgot the casting director said it. Mark Hirschfeld's a great guy. But for the point of the story, let's pin sure. it on Mark. Well, I'm just playing along, too. Now, if Hirschfeld didn't do it, I'm not going to give him the business. Mark Hirschfeld was one of the original casting directors of Seinfeld and was telling me Seinfeld casting stories Day one, like with Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld while we were doing my pilot. Wow. Like, unbelievable. Wow. Someone came to me a couple of days ago who worked for Comedy Central and told me that your animated pilot that they, that was over there was, they thought, and it was widely thought at Comedy Central, was one of the funniest things like they had ever seen. And then it got, it's just the thing is that the network changed hands and the new guy, Chris McCarthy, just said, they just canned it. Yeah, that's what they told me. Yeah. And the show was gone. It's this is pro I I would say that's happened to me four times. Yeah. Where the the, the do you ever tell you about my CBS pilot? This, I, I know. Yeah. I no, know. but this is a true story. Yeah. The C CBS pilot that I had with Chaz Primary playing my father. It was a story about my life. In CBS, we filmed the pilot the day that they were the day, not the day before, the day that you pick CB Les Moonves at the time and his executives. There's maybe nine pilots. That's how it works at these major networks. Yeah. And they're going to pick three or four. Les Moonves, you know, there's Les Moonves. And then his, the man right under him was a man named Glenn Geller, who was a champion of our show. He just liked our show. He was at the pilot taping. He liked our oh, show. Oh, TV's it, weird, It man. came down. They had picked three shows. They needed one more. It had come down to... The one show, who was it going to be? Glenn Geller, who was a champion who had Les Moonves' ear. He was directly under command. Les Moonves' personal hire had a heart attack the morning that they were picking the shows and was in surgery. We had no representation. We had no representation. You had no one and, championing you. And they picked another show. That's the way That's the way the cookie crumbles. And, 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 and this man today, has he ever called you and apologized? No, nothing. Glenn? I, and he survived. Glenn. Glenn Geller, great guy. Glenn, we know he's worth listening. You know, we know you're listening. Know you're the head of CBS development. Yeah, Les Moonves is Glenn and Glenn are listening right now. Glenn, pick up the phone, maybe. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, he. No one could have anticipated your heart attack, but yeah. also like after the dust settled, he should be a major network star right now. It's like and because I mean, because you have been laying on margarine thick for a couple of decades. This man is not going to realize his full potential because you like to fill every nook and cranny. Yeah, with I would like to ask you, Glenn, right now, how selfish 
did you want to be? Mm. You didn't think about me at all. You just thought about yourself. We're not talking and your about heart. in the moment. We're not talking about in the moment. We're being reasonable. But after you were released, make a call. From the hospital, and you see that you didn't get slated. There's no like, look, I've made yeah. a lot of I made a lot of unhealthy choices at brunch for a long time. For a long time, and I didn't know it would, it would come to that at that moment. It was going to affect Chris's show. Mm. Right now, I have a pilot at True TV that I've been told all. All signs point that it's going to get picked up, but I said, I'm Chrissy Pilots. I've had nine pilots. Wow. Not one of them has went. Nine of them. So don't think. Well, I'll there's only you, something that can happen. Before we got Jokers, we had, uh, I think, four or five failed pilots. Right. So, I mean, and then who to... And I, you know, you just never know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that anyone would take to this show like this and, and beyond this. Isn't long. the story? Didn't you like come? You forgot you had the pitch meeting or something. Isn't that like a crazy no, story? No, we had the pitch meeting before we had an idea for a show. <laughs> and you were like coming with ideas on the ferry or something. Yeah, we had it. Well, no, what we something. I'll tell you what we did actually. Yeah. We had it. We had scheduled a round of pitch meetings. Sometimes they call them generals. Yeah, but you want to go in there with something. You right. Know, just because not you the Washington to... generals who play the Harlem Globetrotters. Absolutely not. No, no, no. no they, not we didn't that. get a bucket. Of, I didn't get a bucket of of, of, yeah. of sequins in my face. You didn't. Instead of didn't a pail of water. Nobody hit a half court shot. No, yeah. not at all. But um, no. So we had these, and we're like, oh, we don't just want to go in there and not have anything. So we said, let's go to lunch and think of a show. <laughs> and uh, oh, think of anything. We think of any stores. We and we went to Royal Crown Bakery <laughs> on Staten Island. Oh, on Staten Island, Old Town Road. The, some of the best muffins I've ever had in my life. Shout out Royal Crown Bakery. Shout out, shout out the muffins. We sat out muffin. outside, and we had a light lunch. Right. And uh, we got. I thought of the idea for the show at the lunch. You thought of it, actually. We, we, we did. Yeah, all for you. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we went with our cell phones that week. That I mean, two days later, we went. The four of us only. With our cell phones, and we shot like five bits in like in and around Times Square, cut the cell phone footage together, brought that, and we first went to MTV, and they came back immediately. I'm oh, sorry, uh, yeah, they came back immediately offering to buy it, but they wanted to make it a game show that was on five days a week with a host, and the people that played against each other were just contestants. And we said, now nah, we kind of want to be the recurring characters that people get to know and then they would root for us or not and we want them to get to know us so it's not just a game show. We want to right. do more than that. And then we went uh, true a couple of days later and uh, they offered us to pick up the show in the in the room. Like no pilot. Like we're going to give you eight episodes. Uh, no, it's a pilot. Right. But they offered it in the room. Right. And um, we got and they were going with them and then we shot the pilot and they liked it and uh, uh, they ordered eight off the pilot and then when we were filming the fourth episode they said another eight they bumped awesome. it to 16 and then and from then, then, and then from that. but we, we would have never ever i mean who would have, we had a hundred ideas just like this you know it's like i don't yeah. know it clicks with people yeah yeah just you know well, I mean? a throw away like let's try it it was wild do you have that cell phone footage did you ever post that like the we do you have it yeah. as a matter of fact, the first tour we ever did like eight nine years ago whatever we showed it yeah we kind of did like a little origin like this is this is what we shot this is what became the show that's insane. And that was, what, 10 years ago? It was... Uh, at that, the, the cell at phone that footage. Point, at that point, it was probably early 2010. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. It's wild. It's, it's wild how shit like that just happens, like, in life and TV, where it's like, you have no idea that, like, what you're doing is going to lead to, like, a major thing. Like, even, even life stuff. Like, when I met my kid's mom, who, you know, Jad, my girl, yeah. I... I I wasn't even going to go to the bar that yeah. like I wasn't even gonna, my friend Pat was like just come to the bar I was like I don't want to do it I don't there's no part of me that wants to go to the bar he was like dude just come it's like literally what's one drink is not going to change your life that's what he said <laughs> you know wow yeah I'll never forget that's why he very he said one drink's not going to change your life wow so then I go meet her she's pregnant within a month and I was like, yeah. one drink, the drink was a Long Island iced tea, it unfortunately. Was, yeah. It was a lot of alcohol. Yeah, it changed my life. <laughs> so I, I always think about that, how it's like, you don't even know, like, you can wake up one day and, like, I know it's not, like, tragic or deep, but it's like, you can wake up one day and, like, your life is going to change in that day and you have no idea. Dude, I mean, prior to that, you know, I have a degree in finance. I worked, like, I worked. St. John, Staten Island. That's right. Which, I, by the way, I drove past St. John, Staten Island the other day. What a gorgeous, what neighborhood is that? Yeah, that, that's that Grimes campus, Hill. I mean, be beautiful. Old uh, some of those, some of the Hills. houses that looked, it was like a gated community. See the whole it looked like Malibu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What it's, community it's is that? Wild up there. Yeah, it's What's under that Grimes. I don't know. Man. Three, four million, f millions dollar homes. Yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty nice over there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, that's what I. I mean, I had that, and then I, and then I worked like 
at Prudential. Right. For like five years. And I was doing like... Not uh, doing comedy at all. I was doing comedy, but I was like doing like sketch, improv, and I actually was doing like writing workshops, and I did like some open mics, and, uh, and uh, you know, I was just doing it on the side. <clears throat> And then I left there and became a bartender because I was like, I don't want to be here. This is not what I'm going to do. So I left and I was like, bartending, flexible schedule. I could do more comedy. And while I'm doing this, I'll learn the bar business right. and save money. And then if nothing happens, maybe I'll I'll, I'll, I'll buy a bar. And that's what I end up doing. Yeah, because you had that bar. What was it called? Cargo Lounge? Cargo Cafe. Cargo Cafe. And then I, but I would work there and manage. And then I went to another place. But like, my point was that like, at one, for like, Eight years working there. I worked off the books with no health insurance, no medical insurance, and I, I, I was in a, um, I lived for, for 10 years in a uh, studio, a little basement studio apartment. I think I might have told you this before. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't know I think I was going to be there long, so I never even bought a mattress. So <laughs> I slept on my couch for like nine and a half years. You slept on your couch for nine and a half years? Didn't have a bed. <laughs> yeah, and no health that's, insurance. I mean, that's absolutely insane. And no health insurance and worked off the books. Nine years you didn't yeah, get a mattress. I was like 33 years old, 34 years old. My first mattress was in 2010. <laughs> July. July 1st, 2010, my first mattress. That's just... And I, and, and I, I took an old one What kind of dad. couch were you sleeping on? It was like a leather. Um, it's about this length. Oh, no, it's longer than this. Like and you wonder why your feet face different ways. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, that's could true. you imagine? Not, that's literally... I would imagine that's what the, ISIS is doing to their <laughs> prisoners. It's <laughs> yeah, making them sleep on the, sofa like... At the time I moved out of there, I had slept on that thing nearly one-third of my life. You're a guy that told me, too, the most important things you could ever do is get a comfortable mattress and buy good sneakers to spend money on because it's the percentage of the days that you spend on your feet and sleeping. And yet you, Have for nine and a half years, yeah. well, didn't I, listen to your own advice. I will say this. If it was a problem... If it was problematic, I probably would have had to seek something else. But the couch was fine. It sufficed fine. If you ever brought a lady over, what did you explain to them that you have no mattress? Yeah, I kind of did. You would just say, I don't have one. Well, for like, I think a lot. Because we're not talking I about a for a big, a big portion of it, I was in a relationship. And then she had an apartment. So she never slept over because there's no uh, one to sleep. She did once in a while. What I would do is, okay, so this is what happened, right? So I thought I'd be out right away. Uh, and, and when I moved in there, as a gesture, my dad got these couches for me. Shout out to Sal's dad. Shout out, shout out daddy. Yeah. And, uh, and the couches were a, a three, and then a love seat, which is a two, yes. and then a single. Yes. So he bought the whole Raymore Flanagan getup. Right. And, and, uh, and it, was a, it was a living room. It was like I set it up like a living room, but there was no room for the bed. <laughs> and um, so when, you know, the girl I dated, you know, was over there, like, whatever, if she ever stayed over, like, I, I pushed the uh, love seat head on into this couch to make a like a Franken couch, like a makeshift. But this one was like a good foot shorter than that one. Right. So I would lay on the long couch, and and then she would lay next to me on the short couch. So, okay, because it sounds batshit crazy to talk no, no, about it, it now. Sound, this it is, is. This is. It is. Sound. This is. I'm talking. No joke. I moved into the, the the studio apartment in the year 2000, and I moved out in the year 2010. So I'm talking right now. I'm talking 21 years ago right. that I was doing this. But like, it, it it it's it was fine. Like there was no. I, I don't have anything to. You know, I was in a relationship, long term, serious. Like it wasn't a thing. Like the apartment was okay. It was nice and everything. But it was like it was fine. It's yeah. But I did that. It's Isn't crazy that, wild? that you did that on a couch in a studio apartment on Staten Island. Yeah. Wow. As a matter of fact, we did a pilot. Let's talk about failed pilots. My first pilot ever was a pilot that Fox and Spike bit on with the guys. Where we, it was a single camera sitcom. Where we played like these exaggerated versions of ourselves, and we shot the pilot presentation. It was like an origin story, and we shot it in that apartment. And I literally gave them a tour, and I showed them that this is where I sleep in the pilot. Do you have that footage? Somewhere I do. Yes, I do. I'd like to see that footage and the cell phone footage. Guess where you can find it? Patreon.com slash No Crash Network. You can. It's where we're going to post it. I'm that's a, what That's what I want to say. Get on the Patreon wagon because Patreon is going to be a lot of fun. All these extra things that come up out of nowhere are going to go to the Patreon. Right to the Patreon. I mean. Can you make a note of those? I'll find those. Patreon.com slash No Crash Network if you want to see that. Babe, it's just, it's just, it's, you have a fascinating you're a fascinating character to me in the sense of nine and a half years. Because the amount of time, I don't think what people understand is nearly 10 years to do that. 
Yeah. Is I was perfectly happy. Like my rent was utilities included. Oh, here's listen to this. Listen to this scam I had going. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I lived there through four owners of that home. Four owners <laughs> changed hands and I stayed in the basement. And they through through all every owner. And not one of the owners was like, I'm not, I'm not so I befriended each owner. Yeah. Because they have to negotiate the deal with the owner, previous owner saying tenant. The, the, the tenant and stays. so they say, I got a guy downstairs, quiet as all, get out. Doesn't even have a bed. P- pays, his, does, <laughs> pays, his <bills> on, <laughs> pays his bills on time. You don't even know he's there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I befriended. And what I got was, so the fr- I, I, when I started there, my rent was six fifty utilities included in, in, this, in the summer of 2000. I mean, it's ridiculous. Six fifty utilities included. And then when he left and the next guy came, he told him, listen, the guy pays six hundred. Because what was customary is new guy takes over, they usually jack it up about 50 bucks a month, and I would get back to where I was, and in essence, the rent wouldn't go up. Well, P.S., the next guy didn't raise it. And that happened again and again. So I was there 10 years. When I first started, day one, my rent was 650 utilities included. When, my, when I exited after 10 years, my rent was 500 utilities included. Oh, my God. I didn't need to go anywhere. I didn't need to go anywhere. $500 that a month. That was going right in my it. pocket, that money. Wow. The savings was astronomical. I was able to buy a bar from it. That's literally, you bought yeah. a bar. You didn't have a bed. You bought a bar. Yeah. You bought a bar before you bought a mattress. That's right. I mean, what other podcast does that happen on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just I just like it was fine for me, you know. No, and like, listen, I, I, I'm not. You, it's a it's a beautiful thing how content you are. Well, but if, I don't get it. Like I don't know. I don't understand material. I have my car is like a, well over a decade old, right? I don't beautiful care. car. I, I don't care. I got a car. I, I I I bought it. I thought it was a little too expensive to buy, but I wanted to pay off everything and not have any payments. And for like over six years now, I've had no payments. And I drive around this car. And what, I was going through a, a, a security someplace and uh, they were like, oh, Sal. And I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing, man? And the guy, I guess, you know, people talk and they don't think and they're just like honest with you. And he's like, oh, wow, I, I wouldn't imagine to be driving this. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, what'd you think? He goes, ah, some new, really like expensive type of car or whatever. And I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't need that or whatever. And he's like, yeah, he goes, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I remember I like, getting yeah, goes, in. Yeah, I don't know why I just said that. And I was like, it is what it is. I remember I remember you and I doing a gig last year. I'm forgetting where it was. Maybe it was five and a half hours upstate. I, I mean, I did just lease a new car, but it was the first. But, in 10 years, it was my 12 but years. That car, I remember getting into that car last year where you already had the show and you already you know, had, had the amazing career. And I remember getting into the car and asking you, is this car going to make it to our gig? <laughs> And, and it shakes when you get over 65. Yeah. Yeah, but I loved it. It was a great ride. But uh, <laughs> I fell asleep. I was like, I can't believe this is going to make it. <laughs> yeah. But um, Oh, my God. That was the time with the really, 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 really bad storm. Yes. You f- fell asleep on I, me. I tried so hard to be we a pilot. We had a six-hour drive. Six hours. In, in what I would call El Nino cubed. Yeah. It was so bad that my wipers couldn't keep up. For the six-hour drive, yeah, you stayed up for like two hours, and you don't. And I'm not like, I, look, I knew I once you're in the pilot position, I, yeah, you just do what you need to do. Yeah. You, you were my responsibility at that point. Yes, and then you know you, those. And I would then, do this uh, for I, you. I, 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 t- yeah. I know, and I tell you right now, I was driving that night. I tell you right now, dude, I was white knuckling that thing. You were because another thing was it was raining so hard that I kept hydroplaning everywhere because the tires weren't like big no. traction tires. No. Man, while you were sleeping, we swerved around so much that God was with us that God night. Shout out to night. all the priests. Shout out to all the priests. And then I remember going into the, your hotel room the next morning. We had the conjoining hotel rooms. And you, at that point, were were on a very, very, very strict keto, low-carb diet. And you had ordered you had ordered a full pizza. I saw a whole pizza box. <laughs> I saw a whole pizza box. And I said, oh, Sal, you cheated. And then I lifted up. The entire pizza was there. He had ordered pizza and ordered all the toppings on the pizza and only eaten the, ate the toppings off the pizza, which uh, I said, this I man has skinned animals alive. <laughs> 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 I said, this man oh, is, is a f- Hey, babe. 
Serial killer. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And then I remember eating when your I cold finally pizza commit. Yeah, yeah. with no toppings <laughs> so on it. Who's, who's skinning cats? I know. Who's skinning cats I now? Know. I told you I killed the cat by accident once. No. Uh, we, we, here's the thing. Here's what I'm gonna. Here's what happens with me. I have no short-term memory whatsoever. Yeah. None. You're like Drew Barrymore. I, uh, is that, in is 50 that what First Dates. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 have, I love I, I didn't say the movie. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, she has that? <laughs> yeah. I, have, I don't have it. I don't know in the... Five episodes before this, if I've told this story. No, me neither. I have no clue. We know, none of us but know. I, 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 Who cares? I, we repeat them. We, you know, guys, what, whatever, what do you dude. want me to do? So I remember the other day we were talking, and you said to me, you looked at me, and I said, Chris, how do I live a happier life? I don't remember that, but continue. But I said to you, yeah. if you don't remember, because you were yeah. living a not happy life. You were li- days you, ago, I was in a fog, so don't blame me. I didn't remember. You weren't living a happy life a few days ago. But what did I say to you? When you said, how do I live a happier life? Where did I tell you to go? You told me to go to betterhelp.com and you told me to put backslash hey babe right. and get 10% off my first month. What this is, is it's online counseling. That's what you told me. Right. About. And did you take me up on the offer? I did not, but I plan to. Right. Is that bad? I mean, I've just been busy the last couple of days. No, because I wanted to tell you. That's why I'm bringing it up to you. I took it up on myself because I said, you know what? Sal's not going to do it because he's not invested in getting in happier life. No, I am. And I believe in this. Oh. I I am and I believe in it. And, and, you know, I don't have the time nor the energy uh, to go out to to get get counseling. Plus, I'm a loud talker. But Sal, but that's By what nature, I'm saying. I'm always afraid someone's going to he- hear me from the waiting room. You know what, Sal? And that's why I'm happy to be doing this and we have this all on camera is you're not a good, you're not listening to me because I told you, Sal, as I've been telling you, as we've been friends for years, you don't listen to me. I told you that betterhelp.com slash hey babe is online counseling. Oh. You don't have to go out. You go, the therapist comes on your computer and if you put in the promo code hey babe at betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com, you get 10% of your first month because you've been telling me you have no money. 10%? That's amazing. That's like no tax and then some. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm low on funds. So. You're low on funds. I mean, you know, I mean, what are they going to do? I mean, you know, I mean, you don't get paid for the I love stuff you, you do. Everything is shifting to online now. Yes. <laughs> everything yes. is shifting to yeah. online. Why should this be any different? It's discreet. Yeah. It's convenient. It's affordable. It's probably more affordable than other online services. 100% it's more affordable than other online services that I may or may not be on that my father doesn't know about. But he does know about it. My family's very supportive of me being on betterhelp.com and using the promo code HEYBABE for getting 10% off my first month because everyone wants to save a little scratch here and there. It's true, and it's better help. H-E-L-P. I want a happy wife and a happy life, and I have a happy life. <clears throat> and if you've been thinking about it, why not take the leap? There's nothing to lose. Try it, because in, in, in these times, we all could use a little mental massage. Absolutely. We could yeah. use a mental massage or or a massage after hours, but I, if we want to go mental, we go mental to betterhelp.com slash hey, babe. So what happened? So you almost killed a cat. I was driving down Lyndhurst Avenue in Rosebank toward Bay Street. Shout out Rosebank. Yes. I was in my Plymouth Reliant K car, which was the old driver's ed car. Okay. That I had bought for $900 while I was delivering pizza. And I called it Old Brown. And I had my girlfriend. This was like high school, like like just right at the high school. And I had my girlfriend in the car and my sister, who's 10 years younger than me. And we were going to Palmer Video on Bay Street to rent a VHS cassette. Still there? Palmer no, Video? Long gone. gone. Now it's a vet. Well, imagine a video store was still there. It's I actually mean. a vet, which is kind of ironic to this story. Because we were going to the video store, which is now a vet. It wasn't then. And as I was driving down that block, at a moderate pace, mind you, not speeding. Right. A, a cat ran in front of my car, and I slammed on the brakes, and I hit the cat. And Killed I, the cat. went ba-boom, ba-boom. And I was like, oh, and let me tell you something right now. I don't have a strong constitution. Yeah. I cry at commercials. Yeah. I've never killed. I'm an animal lover. Yeah. I, mind you, I don't like cats, but like, I don't want to kill a cat. No, no, I don't want to kill I, anything. The, 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 the unthinkable happened. I went to thump, to thump, and I looked in the thing, and I saw it in the street. Like, And I'm sorry if this is graphic. It's a fine story. It ends up okay. I pulled over. And I was in shock, and I get out, and I was going toward the cat, and there were people sitting outside on their front, like like porches and lawns and yeah. stuff, and a couple of people came over, and they were like, oh my God, you hit the neighborhood stray, he's blind. And I look my at the God. cat, and the cat has no eye in one, and a, fuck, a completely messed up eye in the other. Like, the socket has no eye in it. Oh my god! And the other one has like it's just all jacked. Yeah. And they go, it's not your fault. The cat's blind. It's don't don't feel bad. And they go, I I don't know what to do. I cannot leave this cat here. I go, I have to go to a vet with this cat. So they put um the they someone went and got a box, a brown box, and a shovel, and a blanket. 
and they li- we lifted the cat. We put the cat in the box. We wrapped it in a blanket. Hold on, hold on wait, wait. So you you put your hands on this cat on I this didn't. eyeless blanket. I, I didn't. But the na- the guy in the, the who brought out the blanket, the lady brought out the blanket in the box. They put it in the box for me. They knew the cat. They used to feed it. Okay, They're like it's our neighborhood cat. We all feed it. It's dripping in blood. This thing. It wasn't bleeding. Right. But inside the fur had to be like things shifted around. Big right. Time, yeah. You know. And so I went to another animal hospital, like, a couple of miles away. Okay. And I walked in, and I said... Uh, Did Pimp just Googled cats with no eyes. <laughs> there, there they are. That's, <laughs> what he, that's what the son of a bitch looked like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, okay. It comes up. And I walked into the <laughs> I walked into the vet, and I said, excuse me... Uh, which was... Which which is a vet at the time? To- no, 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 no. This is another vet. But right now, the place I was going to rent a video is, is a, a vet. vet now. Yeah. But I, I drove what was to this... It? What was it again? Prime Heart video? What was it? Palmer. Palmer video. Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer. So uh, I go and I walk in and I say, hello. <sighs> the car in front of me... <laughs> <laughs> the car in front of me, I uh, was driving behind it, uh, hit this cat and kept going. Yeah. I can't, you know, yeah. being the person I am, I can't have that. Yeah. I was young. I was scared. I didn't really know what the protocol right, was. Right. I never hit anything. So yeah. I just didn't want, I didn't know if he was going to report me. Yeah. I didn't know if they were going to be like, you owe us 25,000. I don't know what was going to go on. Right. So he goes, and the doctor like didn't buy it. The vet didn't buy it from the second. He's like, oh yeah, it happens. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, so yeah, this, we got to put him down. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, like I'm so sad. And I go, wow. And he goes, yeah. So we incur this cost. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And he goes, so if you want to put something toward it, it would be appreciated. And I was like, yeah. I was like, man, I wish that car that was in front of me stopped <laughs> Stop. because it's so wrong that yeah. that he's not going to contribute to this. Right. And uh, he was like, yeah. And he just kind of like. Meanwhile, there's whiskers coming out of the front of your car. Yeah, there's a buck. It's, I got it. You got it? Yeah. On the G-Star Raw sweater? And. Didn't you just say that you love animals and you don't want to kill anything? And then live on camera, you killed that yeah, thing. I don't care. I'll kill a gnat. I'll kill a gnat. I'll kill a gnat's family. I'll kill, I, I'll kill gnats. And I don't know what ecological uh, effect that'll have on the world. And by the way, I got to remember to put the mic up to my mouth. It's okay. But I'll kill I'll kill every single gnat and then worry about it later. You don't think about it. You'll step I on a roach. You'll kill a, a roach. This gnat's going to be dead in a, in, a, in, a, in a day anyway, isn't it? I don't know. What's this? It was span- Pimp, you, know, you it, better get the it, gnat it, if, if, a gnat's, if a gnat's square one... Main trait wasn't annoyance. Right, I, I would be fine with it. Right. I'd be like, fly around, do your I thing. I thought it actually was flying out of your beard. Yeah. It looked like it came out of your beard. It's very. Which, by the way, I got to be honest it, with you, Sal. It, it landed in there, and I slapped your it. hair. This is the look that I hope you always keep. Is that right? I was trying to grow my hair out for three weeks. As soon as it touched my ear, I cut my hair. Yeah. Oh, you, so you like this? I wanted to Good. grow my hair people, just like you. People, like long, people have how long did it take you to grow at, at at the end? My last. Well, I've gotten so, two haircuts in nine months. Right. Uh, you know, because so, you had hair like this, before. like that, uh, in you know, in March. During the- March, you had you had a regular haircut. Right. I had this hair in my life before. I, I like the back. I've had hair, and I, I will. Mark it down. I'll give you the. I'll give you the picture. I had hair ready. It was three times this length. College, really? college. I looked like grunge. It was like to your shoulders. What? And you Pass. put up in a ponytail. Yes. Hit me in the top tit. Would you put up in the top tit hair? Yeah. Yeah. Your top tit hair. Yeah. T T H. Yeah. And I, I used to shave underneath though. I didn't have this. So That's I cool. Shaved underneath. It was like a. Like it a, looks awesome like this. It's, it's and nice it naturally is curly and flowy yeah, at the nice back. Size, yeah, it, you know what it is. We have to keep the same haircut for the show, so the show's right. on. And, and I, I can't be in one scene like that and one yeah. scene like this. But then after quarantine, all bets were off. Don't, and I said, "I'm going to go on." Do not look at the TV. How do you spell Nat? G N A T. Wow, you knew that there was a G. A lot of people yeah. don't know that. Yeah, I would. I was thinking right in the head. I was thinking Nat. Oh yes, N A N A T. I don't know what that is and where that G comes from. Gnat. Yeah, G- GNU, Gna- G- Gary the GNU. Isn't a GNU something, too? There's no GNUs the like good GNUs. Gary GNU. I'm showing my age. Showing my age. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, he says to me, he says, yeah. I go, yeah, I wish that guy would have stopped. And he goes, yeah. And then it was silence. It was almost like a Larry David, like a curb moment where right. they go, where they look at each other like, when he's like, do, 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 yeah. do. You know, they look at each other like that. He kind of did that to me. And then I reached to my wallet. And I remember it was the year I first got, I'll tell you what year it was. It was 1995. Because it was the, it was my second credit card I ever got. It was a Discover card. Okay. And my first one was 94. Shout out Discover. My, shout out Discover card. That came up online? 
No, there you go. There's one on me with on the right with the long hair. I mean, how old were you there? Uh, I was. Uh, let's let's think about this real quick. I was. Uh, we'll post this on the Patreon. Nineteen. Nineteen years old. Very very chiseled, chiseled chin and beautiful long hair. You look like a you look like a lesbian. Yeah, I did look like a lesbian. Right, you look yeah. like a beautiful lesbian. Yeah, actual yeah. beautiful beautiful girl. Yeah, I actually. I mean, gorgeous. I don't, you I don't have actually gorgeous even hair, feel so. much different than a beautiful lesbian either. Yeah, that's me, and that's me when I was fifteen. You, Murr, and Joe. Yeah. Wow. Crazy, right? That that's just amazing. comes up. That's me in high school. I don't. Know. I wonder where they found that. I'm sure at one time or another, people. I don't know. Who knows? No idea where Q was in that. So I reach in, I pull out my Discover card. By the way, still have it, Joe. Member since '95. In this picture that that we have up, and we can post this picture, Joe Gatto. He looks like a black man from the '60s. <laughs> That's what he looks like—a black man in 1965. You feel like that? That's what I, with his hair that he looks like that. He did have very coarse hair. Yeah. 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 Great. So, so uh, great. Yeah, so he says, he goes, how much, I go, I got, do you take Discovery? He says, yeah, he goes, he goes uh, how much do you want me to put on here? And I go, um, $25. Yeah. I, I mean, that was, I mean, I was 18. Right. And uh, he he rang it up, 25 bucks, and then put the cat to sleep, and then gave me a death certificate. With the, it was a receipt slash death certificate for the cat, and and he and it's like an official one, and he wrote on this day of blah blah blah, and then it wrote like the, it was in there like cat's name, like it was blank, like a Mad Lib, right? And he just wrote stray. Wow. Yeah. Do you I, have that still? I do. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. If you don't go to patreon.com slash no fresh network, <laughs> I mean the amount of things you're missing are that, epic. I know I have it. I've seen it. I know I would never throw it out. I will find it. I don't know when that'll be up on the page. Okay. Okay. That's freaking interesting, man. Yeah. I yeah, I I'm not I, I just I don't necessarily love animals. I think I've told stories. I, I had a Dalmatian Cruella. Did I ever tell you about Cruella? No, I didn't so, know you had a Dalmatian. So I had a Dalmatian Cruella who I liked but was scared of. She, you I grew remember, up with. I grew up with. Well, not really. We had her for about six months because the main thing was don't let her go into the basement. But how old were you? Eleven. Okay. And she had bitten like she had chewed up my last, my, like a, p- a pair of sneakers that my grandpa just bought. So you can't leave her into the basement. I never knew why. My mom was like, no, she's never allowed to go in the basement. I said, okay. So then was there she, a chocolate factory? <laughs> I had no idea. Well, worse, she 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 uh she pissed me off or whatever, or I just didn't like dogs, or I was just being a dumb little kid, yeah. and I let her go in the basement, and hours went by, and the dog never came up. She had gotten down into the basement and eaten all the Clorox and died on the basement floor. That's one story. The second story, <laughs> I swear, yeah. I mean, I never knew this about you. Yes, not uncommon. You yes. do this to me a lot, but. I sat here going crazy that I hit a blind cat <laughs> feeling the guilt for it. And you don't mention that you basically mer- poisoned your own dog. It was your yeah. own dog. My own dog. Clor- Clorox. Clorox. It was accidental. Right. But it happened. Wow, so we've both killed an animal. Uh, yeah. I guess inadvertently. Wow. Then then my aunt had a, uh, a, a pet bunny rabbit named Annabelle. Had a pe- yeah. Yeah. Had a, had a pet bunny rabbit named Annabelle, and mom, you're like Lenny from Of Mice and Men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and this is or is it George? No, it's I'm Lenny. George. I'd be the dumb Who's idiot. The George is George. George the big is like one the dumb that big breaks one. the neck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Annabelle. So this is just what happened. And my uncle, shout out Uncle Victor, R.I.P. Uncle Victor, great guy, right from the motherland of Puerto Rico, just a fantastic guy. He th- Annabelle dies one morning. I'm going to school. He would walk me to school sometimes. I'll never forget. My mother had just given me a sandwich. I have a brown paper bag, you know, uh, with, with my lunch. I'm walking down the stairs. My uncle says, "Please hold on. Annabelle died. Takes he doesn't ha- he doesn't have a bag or anything like that. I have the lunch bag. Dumps my lunch out. Puts Sal. I'm not lying. Puts Annabelle, the dead rabbit, in a bag in like a brown brown, paper, brown lunch with half its tail still sticking out." Was go- the plan was to walk to go to the supermarket or the store on the corner to get a plastic bag, wrap it up, and we were going to bring it to a vet. He sees the garbage truck coming oh, down the block and throws dude. Annabelle, the dead me. rabbit, into the garbage truck right in front of me. I hear the thi- the garbage men don't see it's just more garbage in the truck. They don't know it's a dead rabbit. 
I hear it coming down, and I hear like uh, what I thought was bones crushing, bones crushing oh onto the God, back of the dude. garbage truck. And I walked into school holding oh a God. peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a Ziploc bag, a bag of carrots, and a little thing of milk. And my sister Seraphine, RIP sister Seraphine, the principal of the school, same with that score I went, Shout says, why is there no lunch bag? I said, because Uncle Victor put Annabelle in it. <laughs> 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 Bravo. Bravo. I forgot all about it. That was a master class. That, that was perfect. That was that's when you want to hear that that's sound. When you hear. I was I was spiraling into depression. Yeah. And that that that, that, that gaseous bass line just right pulled back. me up from the ashes. Yeah, right there. That <laughs> fart sound, by the way, is one of those farts. Is that real? That's a real story. Your ass I is like like my, your ass is like Charles hit Mingus. Again. Can we hit it again? This is yeah. So this fart, just so we have to hear. Your asshole is Charles Mingus. And I remember it ricocheting, and there was like a breeze that hit the back of my ball sack because of the angle it went. It, it kind of shot up that way. <laughs> you hear the reverberation. It sounds like you're, yeah. I'm turning on an old car. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like the beginning to the theme song for what's happening. Yeah. Can, you, can you put on the theme song? It's like a boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen. Yeah. Just give me Let's the fart, that little bass line and then happening. play the no, fart I've never right seen what's it's happening. It's more like a thought, like a dong. Oh, you don't know this? I've heard of the show What's Happening. <laughs> <laughs> and then hear the fart. So that's that. <laughs> Wow, that's sick. You no rerun? No Roger, no rerun, no rent. Rerun, you know Fred you know Berry. The show, what's happening? The famous Fred Berry. And, 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 uh, listen to this. The mother on this sitcom, was name was Mabel King. She lived in a building called the Continental Towers, which is like an affluent residential building in Manhattan. When my dad was young, one of his first jobs ever, he was the doorman. She had a crush on him, wrote him a note that he kept, that I read when I was little. He used to be on the wall in his office. It said, to my lovely darling Sal, I love you so much, my sweetie pie. I love Mabel King. Wow. Yeah. So Mabel King could have been hey, your Wood mom. Nelson. Hey, hey, hey. Shirley, two grape sodas. Oh, hey, 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 yes. You don't know that? Hey, really? No, I've just never seen the That's show. Rerun. Fred Berry. <laughs> he does the dance. Is that, yeah. <laughs> rerun dance. Okay. Yeah, no, That's I don't know. That's Shirley. I got to watch the show. Oh, it's great. It's like Good Times era. You know? Got it. Maybe yeah. even, a it's actually after Good Times, I think. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, he's, he has a fa he's famous for it. The rerun dance. Yeah. He gets down. Right. He gets Damn, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This guy's awesome. I know. <laughs> Here's what I want. I want you to. I want us to learn that dance choreographed. Thousand percent. Uh, I, 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 on Sal, the Patreon. Patreon.com slash no pressure network. <laughs> We're just like some of these things are not going to be delivered. Let's yeah, go. yeah, yeah. But like, if we could learn that dance together, we'd both be rerun for Halloween, and yeah. we just go in there and do it. Here's what I want to issue though a challenge to our listeners. I want to have Annabelle, uh, the deceased rabbit. Okay. I want to do a comic strip oh, about okay. what might have happened if she came back to life out of the truck. I'd love to do so that. Maybe she ate something like it was like a superhero story. She ate something that was yeah. slightly toxic and it gave her and then she was reanimated. Yeah. And maybe we do a little comic strip of Annabelle, the formerly deceased rabbit right. and the adventures of that yeah. of that rabbit. Did I ever tell you the story about the, the house party? Annabelle, the, the recently deceased rabbit, may be our mascot. Annabelle, the recently deceased rabbit is the mascot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? I yeah. mean, I like it. Yeah, because it's giving new life, to, right. to to her and her story. Right. Annabelle, the recently deceased rabbit. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so there's that, and then <laughs> I, we would talk. I need someone because there was something I wanted to talk about before, and I can't. I just can't remember. Oh yeah. Well, the did I ever tell that. you about? I've told you about that dead dog at the house party. Did I ever tell you that one? Uh, Unclear at this moment. The know. house party dead dog thing with Mike Cannon? Okay. So, oh, this is... 
I think you did tell me this, and this is... Did we say this on the podcast I already? I don't know, but is this something that was... It's crazy, a crazy story. I know this story. I know this it's story. It's crazy I like know you this can't story. imagine. Wait, we have never talked about this on the podcast because when you told me this, I think we were in motion and I almost ejected my own body out of the car. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, what you're about to say is one of the most crazy stories I've ever heard in my life. House party with Mike Cannon. I'm going to turn the air back on. Keep talking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a house party with Mike Cannon. So they have this party. Okay. They have this party. You know, 16, 17-year-old kids, the parents are away. The parents are away. They're not in the house. They're supposed to be gone for three days, whatever it is. So, like, many kids have a house party. So, like, kids kids just start having a house party. They're teenagers, whatever. They're drinking. They're smoking weed. Correct. Okay. So, as many kids would do this, the, the kid puts beer in the dog's bowl, and the dog starts drinking beer. And they're laughing because the dog's getting drunk. Then they start smoking weed and they start they start hot boxing the dog with weed. So they're getting the they're getting the dog drunk and high. They're getting the dog high, yeah. Okay. They do this for Have you heard this story? No. Well, there's only one there's only one time that you could hear it for the first time. Okay? I'm telling okay. you. Okay. So they do so they're hot boxing the, the this dog and they are giving it beer and they're having a great time going off, they're having a great time. The dog falls asleep, and they're like, oh, the dog's drunk, passed out, it got high, it got drunk, whatever. Next morning comes around, the dog's dead. The dog is dead. Unfortunately, the dog is dead. Everybody has- Ding dong, the dog is dead. Ding dong, the dog is dead. Everybody has left the party. The kid wakes up, drunk, hungover. The dog's dead, has no idea what to do with that. As he's realizing this panic setting in, his parents come home early from where they were going. He now- realizes I've thrown a house party. I've killed the family dog. My dad is walking into the house and my mom are walking into the house. So what he does is he waits for them to come and he takes the dead dog's body out the back door, rests it up against a tree, runs up back into the house and says, dad, give me your car keys. Give me your car keys. I forgot I have to go get milk or something. Takes the car and backs it up. Into the dog. Into the dead dog. Takes the dead dog that he had previously placed next to a tree. He placed it next to the tree, runs up, gets the keys, backs it up twice into the dog. Uh, into the dog. The back dog to the is long, long past the dog's from been marijuana. Dead for 12 hours. From ma- yeah. Runs back in and says, from oh my Schlitz God. And, Schlitz and marijuana. All, runs in and says, oh my God, dad, I just killed the dog. He goes... You're immediately going to military school. I watched you carry the dog, put it up against the tree, and back up into it oh twice. My God. Get out of my house. You're going to military school. That's the last straw. And then he went to military school for two years. That's oh, a true story. That is in the father is watching him re-kill the dog. Twice. And then lie about it. And then lie about it. He watched him carry the lifeless body of the dog, place it. Back it up into it. And this gentleman now, at the, the time being after that, subsequently, his penance was to defend our country. <laughs> yes. He was yes. like, you're going to defend the United States yeah, now. That's what you're going to do. You're going to fight but, Iraq. Well, it's, 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 it's life, no liberty, and no pursuit of happiness. That's it's it. just the life. Yeah. And then recently, you know, of course, upsetting, my, my family dog died. Natural causes, you know, uh, 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 well, had to be put down, I should say. Had to be put down. And I'm in there, you know, my mother's very upset. It's, it's horrible, you know, whatever. Um, uh, you know, comforting. It's, you know, bad for me, whatever. 15 years, I have the dog. Love the dog. Shout out Larry. Um, Shout out Larry. He's definitely in the gay part of heaven right now. He's definitely a gay dog. Loved him. God bless him. He, you know, he's still alive. And they... Are they I got something. So he's alive, you know, but he's, you know, he's on his way out. And they put in the, the needle and they say, this is going to be painless. They're going to inject the the thing to kill him, whatever that is. And it's going to be painless. He'll be dead in... He'll he'll just pass he'll just pass quietly in the next ten seconds. So they inject they in- quietly and ten seconds to me are red flags. Yes. Yeah. So they inject so they inject this substance into him, and we're waiting. And my mom's crying and breathing heavy, and the, everyone's rubbing her back. And Larry's still just looking at us, blinking. <laughs> And we're saying it's gonna happen any second. So Ten, just, nine, yeah, so, eight. 
So I say, so like my Cape Canaveral. So my mom is just going, and then and then and then the doctor says, I swear, after about ten seconds, doc says, sometimes it can be twenty. <laughs> I, swear, I swear, I swear, I swear. The so doctor's she, like, don't. Yeah, don't. So the doctor says, sometimes it can be twenty seconds, and, and he's going to pass. It's just, Double the it's seconds. just gonna be like, it's just gonna be like he's going into a dream, uh, to a light sleep, and that's it. <laughs> And Larry's just literally looking dead red at us. Larry's listening. listening. He's right in front of you. Yeah, he's right he, in front he's of us. He's listening to this. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. Larry, poor Larry. Yeah, yeah, listening to us. So now we're the coming adventures up. of Larry and Annabelle. I, I want to see the comic That's strip. what it is. If you're an animator uh, out there, please make the show. So now it's upwards of 45 seconds, and Larry's still just looking at us. So then my mother says, so what is going on? What's going on? So then the, the the vet says just just give it a, just give it another moment. She goes she goes I'll be right back. She comes back in maybe twenty seconds later. She goes I apologize. She said my assistant is new here. The dog next door was dehydrated. We gave Larry electrolytes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh my god! So she oh then, the, god. then the vet says <laughs> the vet the vet says the vet says. Over the next few minutes, you may see a, a little surge of energy. <laughs> so, please, I swear, I swear to God, that the, the that electrolytes is when you try to bring someone back. She goes, Larry's like, I'm gonna die. I never felt better. I never felt better in my life. Oh God. She goes, they injected him with electrolytes. They electrolytes injected because they, you know, just put it in his paw and they injected. Up with, with the wrong thing, and, she, and then she goes. So you may, over the next few minutes, see he may all have had a sudden burst of energy. She says, "She goes, pay it no mind. His last hour is here." And then, and so then he, he gets a burst, <laughs> burst of right energy right before the death. Yeah. So he's like, ah! <laughs> just like bouncing off the wall. So I, my and mom, yeah, he's just like that, that that famous like cartoon, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm like rubbing the back, oh, whatever. God, oh, and then God. finally they come in. With the right stuff. And then the, the, the vet says to my most crumbling, she goes, I promise you, Mrs. I promise you, I promise you, this substance will kill him instantly. <laughs> I swear she says it to him. And I was like, my mom is like, head down. <laughs> we will kill your dog for you I soon. We will kill. I promise you, once he's done being replenished, <laughs> yeah. we will knock him back down to size. Once he's done doing a couple of laps around, uh, the, you know, acting like a puppy uh, again, it's all fake. We will kill now, the thing that you've loved the most for the is, last 15 This is years. important now. We injected him with something to make him youthful like when you first met him yeah it's smoke and mirrors <laughs> yeah just know that electrolytes <laughs> have a shelf life of 56 seconds yeah 56 after seconds. that he's gonna die he's gonna die hard the way you want the, him. the way you want him <laughs> so finally that you know kills him yeah it's horrible you know horrible my mom's like i can't believe i went through that ordeal i'm like i know whatever they cremate him my mom's waiting for the urn for the cremation they said they would mail it out overnight it it will be there within 48 hours <laughs> they're like three, we accidentally <laughs> 3 days go by 3 days 4 days 5 days no idea where it is they mailed the urn to the wrong address wow so they mailed it to the wrong address oh my yeah. god and finally we got it this was the dalmatian this was no no this was the dachshund oh the dalmatian, the dalmatian died, died of, in the basement in clarks Right. Corella. This is Larry. This was a, a hot dog. A hot dog. Oh, my so, God. <coughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Yeah, so that's I what, don't mean to laugh, but that's the no. funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, that's just. I mean, you're trying to kill a dog, you give him electrolytes. Yeah, he gave him electrolytes because the dog next door was dehydrated. So imagine they would have brought. <laughs> they, right. The, and they killed the other dog? Right. She goes, my assistant's new here. You know, it's, it's a learning curve. Wow. I said it's, yeah. Larry's just silent, just blinking at he you. He keeps looking at us. He doesn't. She's like, any second. I remember she said, sometimes it's 20. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to be peaceful and somber. <coughs> Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. So and that. She's like, hold it. She's like, look at any. <laughs> Should be any second now. Any second. Just, he's going to drift off yeah. from where she came. <laughs> yeah. Visit his parents. I've never really seen it gone this long, but <laughs> just believe me, he will pass. Yeah. And three, two. <laughs> he may have given the dog electrolytes. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, she, it was like literally. I mean, he just kept blinking and looking up at us. My poor dog. Uh, my, my first dog I ever had. Uh, house call to put it down, and uh, I was so young and I didn't have enough. I wasn't the one in charge. Right. And I remember being really sad. They put it down in, in the yard that I lived in my grandpa's house. I lived downstairs. They put it down in the yard, and I was there, and I was, like, talking to her. Right. And, I, you know, it happened, and I, it was my first one that I ever lost like right. that. I was super sad, and I was just like, w- you know, what happens now? I didn't want to let it go. Right. And I swear to Christ, dude, the doctor, she had one female assistant with him, and it was the doctor. They mm-hmm. pulled up in his own car. It was like right. a Camry. Right. They came in the back, in the yard. They put the dog down. <clears throat> Ten seconds after the dog went down, he reached into a bag, pulled out a hefty bag, a black hefty bag, went. <laughs> whipped it open, threw the dog in the bag, picked the garbage, a black garbage bag up with the dead weight of the dog in it, walked it down the side of my grandfather's house, down the steps, onto the block. I was walking with them because I was like, can I say something? This is, doesn't feel right. He popped open his trunk, threw the dog in the trunk, in the black garbage bag, closed it. They were like, all right, you know, we'll send you the bill, you know, and we'll, we'll send you what you need. And they got in the car and they just drove away. And I was like, I cannot believe that this guy just That's threw what it is. into it. There was no bedside manner. Yeah. There was no protocol. There was no, no like, there was no, like, <laughs> tact. No, no, no. It was just like, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> I know we've mentioned him three times on the on the podcast. Oh, I'm Mike Cannon. You should follow the great Mike Cannon at uh, Mike Cannon on Instagram. He's had multiple cats that have died in his house, and he buries them in his backyard by himself. Yeah. He digs I, I know that. I've heard cats. of that. I will tell you, we had three dogs when I lived at my grandparents. One was a Chihuahua, and when that dog died, they didn't tell me for weeks. They said it was in the hospital getting better because they didn't want to break the news to me. Right. I later found out my grandfather buried it in the yard. Right, in the yard, yeah. <clears throat> for well, it's, oh, it is on that legal. note. <laughs> yeah, on that note, yeah. By the way, it's illegal. illegal. It's legal to bury an animal on private property. Illegal to bury an animal on public property, including parks. So don't well, get any. Good luck ideas. with that. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, I I got news for you right now. If one day I get a dog and I have property, that dog's going in my in my yard. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. Come find me. Yeah. Come find. All right. Me. Well, listen. You know, the- I know. I I mean, there's definitely like every other episode. There's definitely a couple of things we didn't get back to. <laughs> right. I uh, wanted to shit on Staten Island real estate like you can't imagine, but yeah. I but just because I want to live on Staten Island and the people that I am trying to buy the house from will not give me the house, even though I'm giving them a full price offer and 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 as much money down as I can possibly spend. We, well, let's let's do it next episode. Next episode is your venting episode. My venting we'll, episode. We'll get out there because we've been trying to get it done for a few episodes already. So we just let. Let it go. Let it you go. You fly from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but the important thing is Annabelle, the recently deceased rabbit, I think is in is the is the mascot now. Yes. Possible possible visitations from Stray. Yes. <laughs> possible in, from in, Sh- the comic strip. You might see Stray the blind cat. Yeah. And you might see you might see uh uh uh, uh who's the Clorox dog? Uh, Cruella the Clorox dog. Or you might see. Larry. <laughs> Larry. Larry. Yeah. Larry. I mean, these are, we're building a universe of characters for this comic okay. strip. Yeah. But, 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 but let it be known, Annabelle, the recently deceased rabbit, is who I, I want to breathe new and, life into. And, I'm, and, I, and I agree with that. So there you go. This was Hey Babe. Hey Babe. Hey Babe. Hey Babe. Hey Babe. Hey Babe. Hey babe.